The Trigger Spoon Junior, big enough to draw strikes from trophy trout, small enough to round up a limit of pan-sized fryers, and the perfect spoon to put on the end of your line when the trolling gets tough. Pick up your kit at Trigger Spoon Juniors today at fishhuntshoot.com. So that was interesting. That fish hit on the drop, just letting it drop on a on a tight line, and I think that's something that that some some guys overlook. That's that's sort of like like jigging for bass in a way, you know. You just let it fall on a tight line and shake the rod tip occasionally as it goes down, and oftentimes you'll you'll get hit. It's just a little fish. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. That was a dandy brook trout and man, that was a great day on the water. I was up in the high Sierras with Tom O'Brien. We were plugging with cast masters from the bank and we caught a bunch of fish. And I just wanted to follow up on some of the stuff I said in that video as I was catching that fish. Um, primarily talking about strategy when you're plugging for trout. Now, I'm here on the bank, I've got a jig head on and I've got a little drop shot bait. The bait's not important. Anytime you're using a sinking bait, whether it's a spinner, a spoon, or a little jig, there's some things you need to keep in mind when you're plugging, especially when you're on the shore. This applies to plugging from a boat too, but primarily from the shore. I'm here, I'm on the edge of the water. I've got 180 degrees of water in front of me. Now, I've got limited mobility. I can only walk so far, so I need to cover all the water available. So that means I need to start casting over here and I need to work my way all the way around. There's another dimension as well. I've got from the surface all the way to the bottom. In this case, that water is about 15 feet out there in front of me. So I want to work the entire water column too. And the way you do that is, you know, the first few casts, work your lure under the surface, and then you want to count it down. You want to make your cast, make your cast, throw it out there, it hit one, two, three, and start your retrieve, okay? Now do that for, you know, a series of casts, and, and then you want to go a little bit deeper, you're going to count it down, one, two, three three, four, five, and, uh, and so on. But the thing you don't want to do is something like this. Cast the lure out, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I was out of touch with the bait that whole time. One of the most effective parts of your entire presentation is when that bait is dropping. And this is how you want to do it. You want to stay in touch with the bait. You can leave the bail on the reel open, but you want to stay in touch with the bait and don't be afraid to manipulate the bait a little bit as it falls, particularly a spoon or a jig like I'm using here. So here's, here's what I might do. I'm going to cast it out. I'm going to count this down to six or seven, and I might actually hit the bottom because like I said, it's only about 15 feet deep here. But I just want to illustrate this. So I'm going to flip it out towards the middle. Flip it out there. Now it's sinking. I've got my line on the spool here. And I might even retrieve some line. The, the bait is falling, but I'm in touch with it. I can see the belly in the line. And once in a while, I'll go like that. I'll work it. Now the fish, the fish are very in tune with their environment. They see that bait falling, and I'm not 100% sure what they're doing down there, but I know part of the time, I don't want to get snagged, I know part of the time they'll rush up to that bait, they won't hit it, they're looking at it. So as that bait's falling, give it a little twitch, that might close the deal. But don't expect them to just engulf it. Sometimes they do, but usually that, that bite is going to be very subtle. 
lot of times you'll twitch the lure and you'll get a little twitch back and you've got to be ready so drop the lure in it's it's starting to sink it's sinking give it a little twitch give it a little twitch watch your line and if you get any indication of a strike set the hook and get on the reel right away because usually they're just nipping at it so that's going to get you extra fish throughout the year if you're a bank plugger um that is a deadly trick just remember whenever your bait's falling that's one of the deadliest parts of the entire presentation so make the most of it you cast out here like this water is moving a little bit i'm going to cast a little bit upstream like that i'm going to engage the reel i'm watching the line right now if that line twitches or jumps or i feel anything i'm going to set the hook now it's still falling but I'm giving it a little manipulation with the rod, giving it a little life. And then now I'm down where I want to be. I'll start my, my standard retrieve and bring it on in. Final thought, whenever you're plugging off the bank, work that lure all the way back to your feet. Um, be surprised how many times a trout will follow that lure all the way right up to the shoreline and then take a stab at it. So anyway, I hope these tips help you the next time you're out plugging for trout or really any species of fish. Remember, the drop is one of the most effective times of the retrieve. Stay in touch with the bait. Don't be afraid to add a little, a little movement to it as it falls and work that retrieve all the way back to the shoreline. Beyond that, work the entire arc of water in front of you from the surface to the bottom cover that water thoroughly and uh, when you move on you're going to know there were no fish in that stretch or at least no fish that wanted any part of what you were showing them so anyway this is Kel Kellogg I'm signing off and I'll catch you next time right here on YouTube if you haven't hit that subscribe button please do and thanks for all the support on the channel over the last few years guys anyway catch you later